Hey, welcome back. It's me, Lou. And for today's video, um, I say this all the time, you know, every time, oh, I'm going to change it up and do something different. Uh, so I kind of like combed around and looked at all my different action figures as I no normally do. And the first thing I thought to myself is I want to draw something that looks really gnarly and really different than from what I've drawn before. And I came across uh, this guy on my shelf and I'm like, dude, this screams gnarly. So we're going to be drawing this guy today. Here we go. This is uh, Transformers Pretender and his name is Skullgrin. Um, in all honesty, I don't know too much about this guy just because when I was younger and by the time these, these specific Transformers came out, I was kind of already too old and I was more into like video games like Nintendo and stuff. And I found this guy at, a, at a, I think a second, either at a secondhand store, or maybe a, at a flea market. I can't remember. It was so long ago. Um, so anyhow, this guy's a transformer. He's very different from what people think of when they think of transformers. Most of the time, when you think of a transformer, you think of something that turns into like, you know, like a car or like a vehicle or something like that, or a gun or something. But this guy's different because since he's called a pretender, their gimmick was that they open up in the back. And then this little guy, this little guy here, he kind of folds up and he, he gets stored in the back of this dude. This is like an empty shell. So yeah, we're going to draw this guy today. He's pretty dope. Um, as you can see, let's get this in better view. He has these wicked horns on the top and side of his head. He has these kind of big tusks. He's really burly and bulky, and I kind of like that. This this is one guy you don't want to mess with. He almost reminds me more of like a, a Ninja Turtles villain than a Transformer character. So yeah, this is Skullgrin. This is what we'll be drawing today. So yeah, let's go hit that drawing board and let's get started. Before we get started drawing Skullgrin, uh, real quick, let's take a look up close and see what makes this guy super, super badass. All right, as I mentioned before, this guy has these gnarly horns and he's these giant tusks. Now, one thing I noticed as I was staring at this, that, all right, so his upper torso is this gray color. And if you look closely around here, it almost looks like a jawline, some teeth and a tongue right here. So this was, this toy was made in the nineties. And I'm guessing that for like, um, to keep the cost of the figure low, they decided to like opt out of actually painting this part of his jaw white to match the rest of his skull. So I think for years, even up to, until this day, I think most people don't realize that this lower part here is actually intended to be possibly white to match the rest of his skull. And you know, this is actually his whole headpiece is right here. This part here is not part of his chest. So I think when I draw him, I'm gonna gonna try to depict that. So. You'll actually see him more with a, a lower jaw and an open mouth. But this guy is cool and I'm, I'm going to really draw him big, burly and just kind of like really in your face. So I'm going to start off with his torso first. Um, I'll probably start off with a pit of his neck. Now what you might have noticed is that I initially I started drawing the circle pretty big but then I kind of realized that if I drew the circle to the pit of his neck too big that was going to dictate that his head would be a little bit larger and I think I want to scale back on the size of his head unlike some of my previous drawings and keep him keep his head a little bit on the smaller size just so I could fit more of the character on here now Examining his, um, the, the figure itself, his, his musculature isn't as defined as like, um, let's say like the Incredible Hulk or like a, another superhero that's along those bulky lines like the Hulk or Thanos or Venom. He's, he looks really like he's either like carved, not necessarily carved from stone, but he almost has like a, now that I think about it, he almost looks more like, uh, the texture of his skin is almost like a rhinoceros. And if you see here, you don't really see too much muscles. It's more so just like folds and maybe 
maybe there's like a rib cage. So I'm gonna try to figure out where his muscles might actually begin and end as I draw him. And uh, right now I'm just place trying to figure out where his chest might be. Uh, let's bulk him up, make him look really thick. This guy's a thick boy. Alright, so I hope the camera's picking up this pencil. I'm kind of sketching a little bit light. Okay. Uh, it's going to be his bicep. Let's get his other fist kind of drawn in. How should we have his hand? I kind of want to have his hand. So here's his bicep. I'm still trying to figure out the placement of his forearm and his other hand. Now, do I go for another fist or do I go for more of a a palm or maybe more like a rasp, grasping claw? Yeah, right. Yeah, I kind of. See. Let's go for a. This dude has four fingers, I think. So let's do that. Let's... This guy looks like his, his fingers look really kind of pudgy right now. I might have to just roll with it. I might just have to commit to these pudgier looking fingers. But he's a bulky guy, so I guess it's kind of justifiable maybe. Eraser, eraser, eraser. Hands are kind of tricky for me because sometimes I won't. I, I can kind of see the hands as I'm penciling it, but I could figure out the fingers better once I get in the inking phase, and then from there I kind of make it up as I go along. It's not the smartest way of working because I'm more prone to making mistakes, which in that case, since I'm working with a permanent medium it becomes you know it's a permanent so if i make a mistake it's, it's kind of it's kind of there forever 
But that's, I mean, that's the only way I can see fingers sometimes is actually once I'm actually in the inking phase. I, I have a hard time just trying to make heads or tails of it during the actual layout penciling phase of the drawing. I kind of want to give this guy uh, sharp fingernails also, because I think I think it sells him more of, as a villainous character, especially since he has those giant those giant uh, horns on his head. Okay. He doesn't necessarily have a defined um, musculature on his arms. Like here, it almost looks like a like some sort of armored shoulder pad kind of deal. So we'll go with that. And it looks like there's some sort of horn there, or yeah, some sort of horn or spike. And then we'll do the same here. I don't like the direction that's pointing in. Let's point this one going upwards. And let's start figuring out his head. Now this guy doesn't have a normal, I mean, just by looking at it, his, his skull looks like it's almost like half the size of his torso. So this, I might scale it down just a little, just for the sake of fitting this guy all in here. So that's the top of his head. Uh, let's place. Let's figure out the placement of his eyes. He has. I don't want to make his eyes too big because I think I run the risk of the drawing looking a bit. I mean, he's a very animated-looking character to begin with, and if I make his his eyes too big, I think it borderlines on it almost becoming more cartoonish. Which is alright, but I kind of still want to maintain that kind of presence of him looking kind of very menacing. He almost has like a larger snout kind of shape. And let's give him some really big wild teeth. Now I think this drawing isn't going to be as, as clean as refined as I think I, as I'd like. I think I kind of want this to be look a little bit rougher and maintain a much more um, sense of like kinetic energy in this drawing. So the line work just might be rougher, especially when I start inking it. I really want this drawing to just feel like it's flowing more for me. I don't want to overthink it too much and um, I just want this to have a much more like 
really kind of like raw vibe to it. Like this guy's this. Not that I'm making them up as I go along, but it. It's not something you like. You can actually break down and theorize and try to figure out what shape goes where. I just want this guy to look just really sick. Uh, I might have to cheat with the horns just to fit them in there. Now this is a character design that whoever designed him, I'm kind of envious of because he's so different looking from other like uh, Transformer characters. Whereas most Transformer toys, they're very mechanical looking. And this guy, this looks like something out of like, I don't know, like a, a death metal album cover or something with this, you know, very demon like looking character. And I think by the time this toy came out, I'm not sure if Transformers were still as big of a thing as they were when they first um, were released in the 80s. So, you know, by, by the time this guy probably rolls around, rolls around in like, what is it, uh, the late 80s and or whatever, you know, maybe the Transformers are kind of already off the ra parents' radar and it's not a, as a big deal. Especially since I think since video games were kind of uh, kind of like the big wave of the next big thing. I mean, it was for me anyways. I mean, by the time... This guy came out, I was probably well into like playing Super Mario Brothers on the Nintendo, then thinking about, you know, oh, I'm going to play Transform, you know, I'm, granted I'm old now, but it's just like, <laughs> back then I was probably like, I'm too old to be playing with toys, so. Alright, so there's that, um... So like I said before, his body looks like it's covered in some sort of like, some sort of rhinoceros looking kind of hide. So it's not necessarily smooth, it's just all bumpy and kind of like wrinkly and tight. It almost reminds me of the, the Spider-Man villain um, Rhino. You know, it's a very, the guy's... So he kind of he essentially looks like a rhinoceros, and I think he's trapped in that costume for life, so he can never take it off. Which could explain why he's always so angry, I guess. And then on his knee, on his kneecap, there's another horn. Okay, so this is the this is the layout of, his, of the character so far. Now, like I said before, I I don't want this to be a a tech really clean drawing. I I want this to flow. I want it to move really fast, and it's gonna look rough. So you know whatever mistakes I make or however imperfect this looked, not that it's intentional, but I just want this to be a much more looser drawing. So I'm actually going to start inking it now and then worry about all the other details as they come along.
And as I said before, it's like, fingers are always tricky for me because I could kind of see them when I'm drawing in pencil, but I see them better once I start getting that marker in. So there's his hand and let's kind of figure out his forearm a little. It's going to be like this. And that's his forearm. He kind of has this spike on the top of his upper arm. And that's connected to this like shoulder pad deal. So you really get the impression that his hand's coming at you. And I hope I had have the right amount of fingers. One, two, three, four, five. All right, there's five fingers. And let's work on this other hand. So for me right now, this drawing is more about this, the gesture of it. I'm not necessarily concerned about how refined this is going to look in the end. I'm just trying to see right now if I could pull off some drawing something where it's really more expressive in terms of just the contour and line work. I might actually come back to this later. Um, I might, I might come back to this later. I might just finish doing the contour lines. And then I'll take a break and then I'll decide how much further I want to go back into this drawing. So if there's a if there's like a weird cut in this drawing, that's that's gonna explain why. Cause I'm kinda thinking I wanna after I'm done doing this part, I might want to take a pause for a moment and just kinda collect my thoughts and uh, walk away for a little bit and come back with this with fresh eyes and decide how how much how much further I want to take this drawing. And see whether or not it's worth the investment of like, um, you know, putting maybe another hour into it and really fully out and render it better. But so far, I'm liking what I'm seeing here. I think this is really conveying the, the ferocity of the character. I'm very partial to characters with really sharp teeth. Like I think that's why I like drawing characters like Venom so much. And this guy kind of... He kind of falls into that same category. I think I like destroying a monster, at least humanoid looking monsters to begin with because I don't have to get caught up with them looking too realistic because they're so exaggerated to begin with. It's a lot easier to um, be a little bit more forgiving in terms of like the proportions. Uh, and they don't have to look realistic because it's not a realistic thing to begin with. 
And then he's going to have these horns in the back. Now these horns just look shorter because foreshortening dictates that they're going to be shorter towards the top. Because you're not going to see them all. Because he's kind of coming at you. And uh, he has these large protruding horns. Yeah, it's like I was saying before, I was kind of surprised that this toy looks like the way it does. Because especially in the late 80s, I think there was that whole thing where some of the, there were these, those concerned parent groups. Where they were telling people that if you played like certain metal albums backwards, they'd be like... You know, what you'd hear wouldn't be songs at all, but like... You know, some sort of weird satanic prayers to the devil and stuff. And, <laughs> and this guy just kind of looks like... I don't know, you can tell he's a, he's a product of... Of that time. <clears throat> Alright, let's start working on his upper body. Yeah, so hopefully uh, right now you get the impression of what this character is doing. You know, he's kind of lunging at you with his left arm. Like this is just coming at you totally in your face. And here he is looking all menacing. And uh, let's, let's get his leg drawn in now. Okay, so there we have the basic gesture of the figure. And I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. I think it looks nice. Um, so like I said before, I think I'm, I'm gonna, I want to take a, I think I'm gonna take a pause for a moment and just mull it over about how I want to uh, progress with this drawing further. But in the meantime, before I do that, let's erase some of these pencil lines. That way, once I erase the pencil lines, I'll have a better idea of what this figure... And I just need... It's like I said, I want fresh eyes on this, and... Right now, it's not necessarily a messy drawing, but it's a little bit more raw. Which I'm kind of going for, but at the same time... I am kind of curious to see if I want to go, like, and just fully render this so it's a little bit more detailed. Because there's a part of me where I'm like, yeah, maybe I could just go in and take a marker to it real fast and get dirty with it and finish it up in 15 minutes. But then there's a part of me that's like, the gesture is decent enough where, you know, why not invest another hour into this drawing? Let's see how how much uh, nicer we can make it. So, yeah, I'm, I just kind of want to mull this one over.
So right now, all the line work, it's very uniform. Um, the line weight's very consistent around the whole thing. There isn't any emphasis on a heavier line anywhere to dictate shadow. And that's something I also want to think about too. Um, you know, right now, part of me is kind of wondering, okay, if I, if I decide to go and fully render this out, um, you know, where's the light going to come from? How do I want the shadows to be cast? All right, so here we go. All right, so I think I'm going to take a pause for a little bit. And I'll make my decision up in a little bit. So if there's a weird cut after it, after this, that explains, you know, we're coming back from a, from a so-called little tiny break. So I'll talk to you in a minute.